So one of the features we talked about with the Sabre 350 and 450 is the versatility of the rip fence. Now we've just been checking that the front rail is running parallel with the table. So we just do that by measuring the left and the right and if we need a slight adjustment we can do that by the locking nuts on the stems that are holding the rail in place. Once we've done that, the best way to show you the rip fence is obviously we're going to be doing straight cuts, holding the timber against that and cutting through with the blade. So we want to make sure that it's running nice and parallel with the blade. So one way to check that it's running parallel with the table is you've got mitre fence slots machined into the table which are obviously nice and accurate and they're 19mm wide out of interest and what we can do we can just offer the fence up to the mitre slot and a little tip that I have is I make sure it's running nice and parallel there and just run my finger along and I can just feel that there's a, a little bit of movement one way now just to show you the movement we can get with the fence is we just loosen off the fence itself and this here is a locking nut and this larger handle is the cam what that does is you rotate that it takes the fence in and out and gives you the movement or the fine adjustment required to make sure we can get them accurate cut so if we go back to the the mitre slot now run along I can feel that I need to adjust it slightly at this top end make it nice and parallel once we've done that we lock off with a locking nut underneath and then tighten up on the runner so you know then once that's tight we can actually run this along all the way up to the blade and all the way back to get the desired cut that we require now as you can notice there the fence is running nice and smooth. Now the reason behind that is a way to keep this clean and the rail clean so that the fence doesn't sort of judder along and give you problems during operation. Now a little tip I've found, you can use a bit of white spirit to clean all the uh, resin from the timbers that you've had on there and then if we just put a couple of drops of oil on have a little bit of WD-40 for now and then I use what they call a scratch pad that all the wood turners will recognise and just a light bit of pressure and just clean all the resin off that's remaining and just get a nice working surface I don't know if you'll pick it up on the camera but we've got to build up a resin around the main cutting area and we can do that all the way across the table if it's got to a stage on any bandsaw with a cast table where it needs a lot of work or you've left some uh, wet timbers on there and it's soaked in and stained the table, you can remove the blade, use the scratch pad again and have a little orbital sander and just a light bit of pressure as it's rotating it's going to give you a nice even clean up all the way on the cast table. Then we've obviously remove all the oil, we can get into the mitre slots as well once we've removed as much as we can what we need to do then is give the cast iron a coating and the rail a coating so it runs smooth now we use a silicon spray uh, which is part of the record range CWA 195 but you can use wax as well just be quite liberal with that put it on the table and across the rail Obviously we're going to let that dry before we just get a dry bit of cloth and we can just buff that in then. Just make sure it's evenly spread. Then as you saw before it's just going to give you that nice action so you're not struggling when you've got the work on there to get the fence in position. Now as you can see when we're right up to the uh, the blade itself. If we're doing a, a cut that's quite substantial we can get the, the fence up there and we can still get the support from the guides. But if we want to drop the guides down and do a, a smaller cut 
obviously it gets to the stage when it's touching, the fence is actually touching the guides. So what we can do then is just remove the high fence by loosening off, taking the cam out of the way, and we can slide this through away. Now what you can see on the back side there is some wear pads and there what's going to be running on and stopping the metal to metal obviously over time they can need replacing but we can turn that over and we can run that in so the high side is down to the table and then go through the same procedure making sure it's lined up and nice and square locking off on the cam and then when we bring the guides down obviously you're still going to get the support then when you're doing your your thinner pieces of timber and you want to do the cutting you can come up to the rip fence and still get the support with the guides while you're doing that that's just one advantage of it the other advantage of this fence is because we've got the longer rail on there move the guide out of the way we can remove this out of the way and we can move the casting to the other side now we remove the slide or the guide completely and then we can move that to the other side and what that will allow you to do is run the fence on the right hand side of the blade especially if you're doing a little bit of angle work turn the fence around and push it in from the other side once that's secured in position again we can use the slot to get the alignment right, use the cam to make sure it's nice and square and lock off and then the idea behind this is if you want support when you're doing some angle work with the table tilted you're going to get the support you require and you're not going to have to be holding it up against the fence while you're pushing the fence is going to do the job of supporting the timber while we go through at an angle Obviously, the advantage of that is we've been able to do all that without removing the blade to swap the fence over. And that's because we've got this longer rail that gives you that support. So I hope that's helped you out with the rip fence. But any questions on any of the fence, please come back to us.